Hey look! More dinosaurs to cover! Yay! No, the facade is broken. I actually hate dinosaurs. Oh god! How are you legends and welcome to a special episode of Jurassic World Evolution 2. Kind of speculation. As you may know, I uploaded two videos to the channel. Thanks to Frontier, I was allowed to play Jurassic World Evolution 2 again. So close to, you know, the release date, which I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, sure, why not? I'm not going to say no, am I? I wasn't the only one who played it, of course. Uh, other YouTubers played it. And thank God they gave it to, you know, other, like, dinosaur YouTubes. I felt like with the first one, they gave it to a lot of random kind of maybe popular uh, YouTubers. But this time, they actually actually gave it to people who cover a lot of Jurassic World Evolution. I'm talking about, you know, like uh, uh, Evo Squared and uh, Swerve, for instance. But uh, when I played it, I knew that there was more that I could have tried out. No more recording. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. And it was only a matter of time on the embargo date for when all the footage goes live, that footage will come out of what I'm looking forward to most, and that is carnivores taking on herbivores and all this other stuff that we've seen. Like, for instance, we saw uh, the raptor species profile, um, raptors taking down a cyno. Uh, so, I have decided to go onto the Jurassic World Reddit and see just what I missed. So here in this clip, again, I didn't credit who this was, so I, I couldn't tell you, um, but it's kind of interesting because as soon as that T-Rex hits that gate, when its head hits it, the, the male Rex, watch at the top here, even though the gate's already open, it starts sparking. So to me, that's like, it, you know, maybe there was some workarounds with the original evolution where you could just make a whole wall of gates and they couldn't break out. Um, but with this one, if the Rex or any dinosaur hits the gate and breaks it, I'm assuming the gate's part of, you know, the, the type of fence that you make, then the gate will probably just open. Uh, as soon as that's like as a fail-safe mechanism, even though it doesn't really make too much sense to make that a fail-safe mechanism. But that's quite interesting. Another little dynamic that, um, I mean, we didn't really ask for, but, you know, it's going to negate some things and it's going to make playing a little bit more interesting. Now they can actually open doors. This is from DM, which shows a uh, Apache being hunted by a T-Rex. Now, this is really interesting because, for instance, with the original Jurassic World Evolution, dinosaurs had to line up and it was very... Very obvious, because like a dinosaur would literally turn on the spot and then wait for the other one, and then they would both stop. So now I think what Frontier have done it has well, I think what they've done is they've gotten better at hiding it. I think it's still that exact same system. Uh, and I was really hoping that somebody would have a Triceratops fight with a T-Rex just to see if they do still do the spinny spin. Um, but we haven't got that. I could be completely wrong. And we're going to go into it because we see uh, like pack huntings uh, with Velociraptors in Paris. Thanks to uh, Connor, best in slot. Um, we'll get into it in a second. But first, we want to look at this one. So we have Apache Cephalosaurus. Now, what it seems to be doing is just running along. It's probably panicking because it's in an enclosure with the T-Rex. Um, but there is a very clear, like, uh, keyframe where they both lock onto each other and that's when it dies. It was a bit like that with the Conotaurus with the goats um, in my original playthrough, uh, like a month ago or so. So here you see, and that's, you see it just there. So we'll play it all the way through and see if you can spot it too, where the, the lock-on happens. And there you go. A, an interesting kill. Very similar to um, the way that it would probably kill a Struthiomimus. I think it stepped on its head and like pulled out. So we have the T-Rex charging over. The Pachycephalosaurus is on its own, you know, it's doing its own thing. Why do you... There we go. Okay. God. Reddit player, man. You're awful. <laughs> so you have the Pachy running along. Uh, the T-Rex runs into it. And bam. There it is. That moment right there. You, it's very subtle, but the uh, the patchy gets pushed forward or pushed to the side, I should say. Um, I don't know if I can put it in slow mo, but you see it like it's running very clearly here, and there it was. That like quick speed up of the patchy. Um, the T Rex, I don't know if the T Rex speeds up, but the patchy does. If you look at its step, we'll count the steps. So you got ready one two one two one two one, and that that one two one that is when there's a, a tween between the two animations between the patchy's uh running animation and then the patchy die to t-rex animation so it is like the original evolution but it's a lot smoother and i it's 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 not what I was hoping for completely. Then again, this is Jurassic World Evolution 2. This, basically, this whole game is 
what evolution should have been, if given the time or whatever they needed. Uh, but it, it works really well, and only if you're looking for it, you see it. Uh, this was an animation. Again, I don't know who this is by, because it's been cropped and not credited properly. Uh, but I only caught the mid bit of this, which is uh, a homage to, of course, the Eddie Carr eating animation from The Lost World. Another, it's just a lovely touch that Frontier decided to put in there. I should credit, shouldn't I? Sh Silver Shark 307, there you go. A little bit of credit. Uh, showed what the Jurassic Park viewing era looks like, or the viewing viewing platform, that's the one. So it looks very like um, an aviary almost. You've got a cage going around it. Almost feels like it's in an enclosure in itself. Um, and I kind of want to get into um, like enclosures themselves. Speaking of that, I was really hoping that we would get something that was different from Jurassic World Evolution. We've had the viewing platforms, we've had the viewing vents, we've had Jarosphere, safaris and all that jazz. There's nothing else. I was really hoping that we would get something you know, a different attraction. Like I said, like the tunnel to go through an enclosure or something like that. And you know, this is a this is the sequel to the game. And what we're getting is the same attractions, but now they've got maybe a different aesthetic or you can change the color scheme on them, which is great up to a point, but this is the sequel. You know, we're, we're gonna be paying full price again for basically the same game, but better. I'm excited for the game, but at the same time, I kind of want a bit more. And I don't think that's too much to ask. We're paying $80, God knows what it is in American, but you know, full price, like AAA game price for this. For this, And I, I really want it to be something new, something different, you know, yes, have the platforms. Yes, bring over the viewing. Basically bring over everything from Jurassic World Evolution and then add something extra into it. And I haven't seen that yet. Even in my game playthrough, where I placed the uh, the safari tour, and there was some difference with it. Like you could add a photo booth, and I don't know whether this uh, improves the the guest experience or whether you get to see pictures. Um, it's a nice little touch. But this is one thing, and it's kind of like a scenery. It doesn't really do much, or at least I don't know if it does much anyway. Oh, okay, so to say, I think there's this a French YouTuber who's uh, who's recorded this, the same guy who we've just seen do uh, the Apache and T-Rex kill animation. This guy was on it, he knew what to do. So remember, Dress the World Evolution, sauropods were only ever affected by Indominus Rex. Every other dinosaur would just roar at them and that was it. However, the T-Rex looks like it could actually kill or damage the sauropods. So it runs up here and takes a bite out of the tail. And it's so nice to see this because when you look at them side by side, you really think, you know, a T-Rex could just easily take a bite out of the Momentosaurus. It could kill it so easy. Now, I don't know whether, you know, these are to scale, whether Momentosaurus was so much bigger, it really wouldn't, you know, T-Rex wouldn't be able to harm it. But in Jurassic World, the, what we're seeing right now, it makes sense for this to happen. So the T-Rex bites the tail and then goes for a nibble on the, uh, on the front leg there. Um, now, it doesn't seem that the uh, the Mementosaurus has any damage or any notification comes up. Actually, there is a notification that comes up. Uh, but, oh, it's already there. This is a low health uh, in danger, I think, thing there, notification. But because these dinosaurs haven't been checked up on, uh, that might be a reason why we don't know if it's been damaged at all. I would assume, you know, a bite on the tail and a bite on the leg from a T-Rex would probably lead to some sort of fracture, cut, or something that, would you know, we will need to address. Uh, by sedating it, taking it to the car wash, and then seeing what the damage was. Um, but just a lovely interaction there. And we see it from a, a couple of different angles here. Um, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, you've got a T-Rex stomping on another T-Rex's head. And it looks like this uh, Mementosaurus did die uh, from the multiple attacks from the T-Rex. That's interesting. So, uh, oh, here we go. Oh, God, that wasn't very good. Again, we, were we on normal speed? Oh, we are on normal speed. Uh, this is something I want to talk about. Um, every time I've recorded Jurassic World Evolution 2, uh, whenever it's come to an animation, it's been a bit weird. The, the Carnotauruses were like jousting each other, but with uh, social distancing involved. And the T-Rexes were phasing through each other when they were doing some sort of play animation. So strange. Um, but here we see what really, really looks like herd behavior from the paras. 
which I'm so happy. That's something that I don't know if anybody's mentioned. If we just take this footage back, I'm mean, gonna take it back a fair bit there. Um, so let's see when the t this, okay, so this is normal. Remember, this is normal speed T Rex going from Mementosaurus. Does it look normal speed? No. <laughs> but you'll notice the paras are herding together. They're all going the same direction. That is brilliant. I love that. Uh, another, another lovely little touch. I think it really felt as though, you know, when it came to, um, you know, the paras running away or just in any herbivore, they were all, you know, their own minded creatures. They were all going different directions to get away from this. But seeing the paras there in a herd running away from a T-Rex threat looked so good. And that's something I didn't even know that like I was going to find today. Okay, this is what I was talking about. I think this is probably the same guy. No, this is Evo Squared. Evo Squared. I, I, I recognize the sub button there. Um, this is her footage, I'm assuming. Now, this worked. For me, I don't know what it is. And I was, I'm glad that somebody got it working because... I'm going into this, I was thinking, well, none of the animations work. <laughs> but this is what the uh, the T-Rex animation should look like. Look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Lovely. Look at that. Oh, that's awesome. Nice little bit of editing zoom in there from Evo. <laughs> but that looks so good. Just another, like, interaction. Hopefully there's multiples or else, you know... One isn't enough. You need at least two or three just to spice it up. So here we are in Best and Slot's footage. I don't know how he got so much footage. I think there's some favoritism there. For, are you playing the system? What's going on? <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have no idea. I think everybody had to play like half an hour before recording in a two hour session. So you can only record an hour and a half. But I think Connor, I think he was just like, yeah, can I just play Chaos Theory? Thank you. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't even realize that was a thing. He's putting a cheat code. Jeez, who does he know? Anyway, but thankfully, um, he because of his extra half an hour, or probably because he was going into this thinking, I need to show this off, we are able to see what pack hunting actually looks like. Um, and I am going to go into this blind, basically, like maybe some of you, um, because I've seen some bits, but then I haven't made my mind up whether I like it. I mean, I like how it looks, but let, anyway, let's just play. So here we see a raptor who's already pounced on um, a Parasaurolophus, and Para really doesn't look too fussed. It's like, oh, oh, you're on here. But we got another raptor running over here, and I think that's a goat over there. So the para is standing still. The raptor actually jumps off, decides to jump off, and then jumps back on. Another raptor also piles on. They keep on jumping on and off. Now, this is where stamina might come into it. Um, and I was wondering why we have a stamina stat now, but it could mean that maybe if a herbivore has a lot of stamina, then it can tank these kinds of attacks. Um, and the raptor might die, but look at that, it jumped right on its head. Wow. Okay, so, and then it's down. So the power there really didn't stand too much of a chance. Love this animation. This is bringing back vibes of JPOG. I love J the way the raptors would hunt a JPOG. It was random. It was gorgeous. I loved it. Um, and we've got a little bit here. I'm really not a fan of the running animation, though. This... <laughs> I gotta get you. Here we got... Uh, another attack onto another para. Now, you want to have a look at one of the raptors because it runs up to it and then it slides. Again, another tween animation from the running to attack. Um, subtle, but you see he sort of runs sideways here and goes onto it to attack this para. Now, if we have a look at... Can we see where this para was before they decided to attack it? So, let's have a look. So, they, so this is the para. It runs off over this direction and then it sort of stops. It ran into it and then stopped before the attack happened. Now, this might be because it's turning or it might be like we saw with the Patchy and the T-Rex that it's lining itself up, but subtly. Um, and I think that might be what's happening here because I've seen a lot of people say uh, there's, there's an argument to and fro between uh, whether they're, they're randomly attacking, whether it's pathfinding or something like that. And you see two raptors attack. This is great. You have a raptor falling a different way this time. Actually, not gracefully. Anne is falling off. And that is glorious. We see the para take advantage of that and then knock it. Now, the, the raptor kind of ragdolls and then sort of gets up there. That's gorgeous. The ragdoll to getting up. Beautiful, nice work there, Frontier. The other raptor continues its its work, and look at it, it's kicking. It's getting that, like, Whee! sickle core in there. Oh, that looks gorgeous. I mean, that's what a raptor would do, just latch on and then just try to eviscerate its prey. Cores bleed out. Oh, it's great. And then the other raptor gets back on. Um, the thing is, 
The paras, once they're jumped onto, and you might see it here, they do not run away. They just stay there, and then it's now a battle. It's like whatever whatever will be will be. Whoever's got the most stamina, most attack, whatever, is going to win. And they're not leaving that position, or at least I haven't seen any footage to disprove that. Maybe we'll see it in here. So we got a <laughs> raptor facing through the floor there. Uh, so I think this is the same animation. The raptor falls down. Again, it's uh, it's fallen into quicksand, apparently. Uh, and then the para does the same kick to it and knocks it away. So there's an animation for it to gracefully jump off. And then there's an animation for it, maybe when its stamina is low, then the herbivore can take advantage of that and then deal some damage back to it. So a raptor that's hunting by itself needs to have great stamina or great attack in order to take down a herbivore by itself. Otherwise, it might not. Uh, so this one here, I don't think it's had a problem yet. It's probably got great stamina. This one jumps back on. The one that doesn't have great stamina falls off again and gets kicked for the third time and ragdolls. So maybe this raptor's already hunted a few paras. Its stamina's ran out and now it can't disembark gracefully and gets kicked. This one, however, still has its full stam. So, and there we go. Another dead para. Uh, we've got one coming on over here. Uh, that one dies too. Unfortunately, I didn't see that one run for it. This one's in the corner grooming itself. Quite lovely. But it's not moving. Not running. I don't know whether the raptors will go for it, but wow. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> and then we see, sometimes you see these weird, weird animations kind of happen. Uh, and then you, you ah, it's kind of odd because they're not going for the target What's happening here, there's three raptors, and you can tell the AI is going, you go there, you go there, you go there, para, come over here, and that's, it's like stage directions, and, and they have no idea where they're going, that's why you see this para, like, <laughs> back up randomly, like, why would a para just go, see ya, <laughs> just go back, it wouldn't do it, and then if you look at these raptors around here, this one goes to the left, kind of almost glitches out the fence there, uh, and then these ones, they, they need to get in their positions, follow this raptor right here. Uh, yeah, he's, he's running backwards, and then it's not polished. And, and of course, this is a development build, so they're probably working on it, and maybe it'll be completely polished when the game is launched. Uh, but as you see, um, there, there kind of isn't this randomness um, that people are maybe expecting, or it's not quite there yet. This was great, this rollover animation of the para, to get off the raptors and cause damage. Now... That's great. That is brilliant. And so you've got all these different little animations that can happen. The parrot can just stay there. It can kick a raptor. It can roll over. It's going to be really good. I can't wait to do some battle royales with this, man. This is going to be awesome. And then you get this really weird, like, ritual, like, dance ritual of, like, raptors just... Oh, I don't know. I, like, what are they doing? Are they waiting for the right mode? Is the para having to get up? There's, okay, para gets up. And there we go. That's when it jumps on. Once the para does that... And then again, you've got the knockoff animation. That was lovely. This little animation that happened right here was a lower animation. Yeah, so the para fell down and then knocked the raptor off. So maybe, if, the, like I said, the herbivore has more stamina. The raptor will not latch on. But gorgeous. Again, another kick. Now, I did watch the rest of Best and Thoughts uh, play. Oh, like I saw a clip of this. Um, and his raptors ended up dying. And I think that might be because they took damage from this. I'm really not too sure. Yeah, that, that is weird. That is so strange. Now, it'd be really cool because you see what happens here. There's a raptor latched on the side on the left. Now, the para decides to flop over, crushing these two raptors. If we have a look. Yeah, look at that. But I think all the raptors are okay. They get up and they're completely fine. And then you get this like, which way we're gonna grab on? And then it just so sort of dies. It's odd. It really is strange. But we have seen now what pack hunting looks like. It's it works. Maybe a little bit janky, but I'm, it's much better than one raptor takes out a para every time. Another thing that happened uh, that I did in my playthrough was unlock. Uh, I think I I was really focusing on just trying to finish San Diego and see if there was anything in particular that happened. Um, but when you get to a certain star rating, I think it was three stars or something like that, I think to, I got to, um, you're allowed to expand your islands. Uh, now, this is probably what happens in challenge mode. This is probably what happens in campaign and chaos theory. I would assume that 
but in what's it called in sandbox you probably just get it all unlocked already um adds another air of progression to it so you have to start out small and then as you get you know you get bigger you unlock more space you more dinosaurs and that yada 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 uh, and compies still get transported by uh by helicopters uh, that's interesting. Okay. <laughs> so here's the argument for whether the pack behavior is, you know, whether it is an actual pack behavior or the dinosaur waits and you have, you know, the old evolution playthrough. Uh, sorry, animation happen. Right. So you've got a para here and you've got one, two, three raptors. So you've got a raptor running for the para. The para runs away into a corner and then the raptor attacks. Now, What's interesting about this is the argument that they're making is that, like the old evolution, that the para stays in spot and then the animation plays. What is actually happening, and it's sneaky because I think this is the way it's happening, Frontier have done it, is that instead of them just waiting in place, the AI goes, para, you go over there, raptor, run to it. That's what's happening. So it's kind of, it's trying to hide it in a way. So it, it's not random. The raptor has already picked out its prey. It's already going to attack it a certain way. But the AI is telling it, no, you need to go over there to be attacked. And I think that's what's happening here. Um, and another, like, but they do stay in place once they're attacked. I have yet to see anything move. So here's another argument. So we got a para running, para's running away. Uh, I'm trying to figure out where the raptor. So here's a raptor. Uh, so what does it go for? Which one does it go for? It jumps on that one. That's interesting. So again, another thing that I think what's happening here. So this raptor seems to start attacking here and this para is over here. So I think there it is. This animation started as soon as that raptor starts running towards it. The para then turns around and runs towards the raptor. Interesting. Um, and what I think has happened is that again, the raptor is being told you will jump and latch onto this para, but the para is being told run this way or run to that spot because the para doesn't keep on running. The para stops in a certain position for the raptor to attack it. And then once this attack happens, the, uh, the para just stays still. So the argument is right. You are right in saying that they don't just lock in place and wait for the raptors, but they do once the raptor attacks and they move to a position to be attacked. That's what's happening here. We're not going to see raptors run into a herd and, you know, like look around, maybe attack one and then go to another one, you know, pick and choose their targets. No, what's happening here is the raptors choose a target and then kill it. They run towards it and kill it. And the para goes, I've been attacked. I'm going to walk over here to be attacked. And then the battle's going to play out. What Frontier have very cleverly done is tried to hide it. They've tried to uh, cover up how it's working. But if you look at it slow down, you really analyze it. I think that's what's happening at the moment. Like I said, uh, Connor Bessensot was the only one to get this kind of footage. Um, so maybe... Uh, maybe there'll be another, you know, uh, playing thing that happens. I don't think so. Another gaming session where Frontier go, hey, how about it? I think now that we are 30 odd days away from Jurassic World Evolution 2, we're just going to have to wait till November. Aha, see, this is why you needed Swerve to play it as well. Uh, I know you're taking a screenshot for Jurassic World Evolution. So Indoraptor is also coming back. I mean, it, w it would be ridiculous if we had Indominus Rex without Indoraptor. So Indoraptor is also confirmed. As well as that, so Geek Town also uh, made a video interviewing uh, Rich Newbold. He, you've probably seen him in all the uh, Jurassic World Evolution 2 promotions and uh, stuff, the videos that they do. Um, but in this interview, he confirmed there was two other aquatics that are coming, and that is Lyplurodon and Elasmosaur. So Elasmosaur being another long neck plesiosaur, uh, but Lyplurodon being a short necked plesiosaur, which of course will need different animations. Mosasaurs we've seen, like the actual mosasaur itself, probably something like a Hainosaur or a, a Tylosaur, something like that. And of course we've seen like the uh, the long neck plesiosaurs like Plesiosaur, uh, Attenborosaurus, and now Elasmosaurus. I'm assuming they'll have the same animations. Uh, but Lyplurodon will probably need a different animation, so it'll be interesting to see uh, what they do there. Footprints are another lovely touch. I noticed that when I was editing my video so if you look at the t-rex it's leaving loads of footprints um something again just really makes them feel more alive and adds weight to them but 
Anyway, if you've enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you are hyped for Jurassic World Evolution 2, of course, like when it, come, when it comes out, of course, we'll play it. We'll do the campaign. We'll do all sorts of things. Everything that you can expect from Jurassic World Evolution, we'll do it in this one. Of course, we will. But if you enjoyed this video, I've already said it many times. Leave a like. And until next time, I'll see you cutie beaver babies later. <laughs> oh, bye bye.